from the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS Studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome, everybody, and welcome, fellow patriots, and welcome once again to the, the to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. I'm Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network here at WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7, and we are everywhere, we are everywhere, and we continue to expand. And joining me today as my co-host is the patriot from the Battleborn State, the Silver State in Nevada, my very good friend, Sharon Angle. Sharon, welcome to Conservative Commanders Radio Show. Thank you, Rick. I'm missing you already. It was so much fun to be there in New Jersey and also to be live, to be live at the Philadelphia studio with you. It was great. Yeah, it surely was. The opportunity. And, and uh, let me expand by saying that um, it was great to have you as a guest of Mary and myself in our home for a few days and um I look forward to that opportunity again, I, and that was brought about by your granddaughter, Tia, moving around a little bit, and gee, I, I hope the next time that you're on the East Coast that uh, we, we, we get to do it all again. It was so nice having you as a guest during our home. We sure did enjoy it. Thank you, Rick, and I want to give a shout out to CJ and Tiana there in Philadelphia, and also to Kenny Cunningham and his mom and dad, Ken and Sherry, in Alexandria, Virginia. That's right, and we met Kenny at CPAC, and a great young man, a terrific young man, and he mentioned to us that his mom and dad were loyal listeners to the show. So... That was, not, was, that was nice to hear, considering they're in Northern Virginia also, and obviously they listen over the Internet or one of our many rebroadcasts. It's, it was, uh, it's great to hear that from people. Yes, it is. It was exciting, actually, to know that in a bastion where we think of liberalism as running rampant, yes. we have some staunch conservative parents that are raising conservative children mm. and teaching them the Constitution. What a concept, Rick. What a concept. What a concept to learn about the Constitution. And certainly, that. and we talked about this last week also, what a great young man, man Kenny was. And it must have come from his parents, you know, that his his faith, his belief in conservatism, it was, it was great to hear coming out of a young man like Kenny. That's right. That's right, Rick. Well, you know, here in Las Vegas, we bet. We bet a lot. We bet in Reno. It's a betting state. It's a gambling state. Indeed. And they are putting election odds on the elections tonight. Oh, interesting. I interesting. <laughs> well, interesting. you know, it's a, it is an interesting Super Tuesday. Florida, Illinois, Missouri, North Carolina, and Ohio are up for grabs tonight. Mm -hmm. There are 360 delegates at stake for the Republicans and 691 for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And the odd makers at sportsbook.ag continue to offer odds for the 260, 2016 presidential election and the nominee for both parties. And it's a, it's interesting. They're given odds now on if you want to bet on the Florida primary. They're saying uh, Mark uh, Donald Trump, uh, 1 to 35 odds. They think he's probably going to win. 
He's going to win in Florida. Both 10 to 1. Ted Cruz, 250 to 1. And John Kasich, 1,000 to 1. So mm. you might want to get in on that one in oh, in uh, Florida. In Ohio, mm-hmm. they're saying John Kasich, 1 in 5. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump, 3 to 1. Interesting. Ted Cruz, yeah, Ted Cruz, 750 to 1. And Marco Ruby, oh, 999. <laughs> 9,000. 999 to 1. <laughs> well, That's an interesting number, isn't it? And, yeah. and uh, I guess they didn't want to give us 10,000 to 1. They just <laughs> wanted to get close. <laughs> and then, uh, In other words, there, don't bet your house on that bet there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and then they do the odds to win the presidential election. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hillary Clinton at 1 to 2. Hmm. Donald Trump at 12 to 5, Bernie Sanders 10 to 1, Ted Cruz 20 to 1, John Kasich 25 to 1, Joe Biden 45 to 1, Marco Rubio 75 to 1, Mitt Romney 125 to 1. Mitt Romney? They got put Mitt Romney in the mix? Back in. Well, listen to this one. Paul Ryan 50 to 1. <laughs> Paul Ryan? <laughs> what? So, uh, uh, you know, the. Uh, he is through, bag according to Las Vegas. Yeah. What? <laughs> There's a name missing there, Sharon. There's a name missing. Uh, actually, there's two names missing. One is Bernie Sanders. That's right. And the other is Marco Ruby. Oh, no, here he is, 75 to 1. Well, no, well I'm the one that I'm thinking about, and especially since they threw in Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney, Joe Biden. Oh right. Well, yeah. If they're gonna if they're gonna throw in Romney and Ryan, they should at least give Biden a fair shake, right? I, I, I and, you know, and I've mentioned this before, Sharon, that I don't think that the Democrat nominee will be either Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. I've well, said here I, before, and I'm standing by it. I still think it will be Joe Biden. And let me tell you my scenario. Uh, I think they even the Democrat Party sees Bernie Sanders as unelectable. I think that Hillary, they, Hillary Clinton is toxic. I think something may happen between now and next November where she is pulled off the ticket and replaced by Joe Biden. Joe Biden running, riding to the rescue of his party and the, and the, and the country. We'll see, but that's so, what I've got my mind that's, on. That's right. Well, they do have a bet on Hillary Clinton, 1 to 12, to win the presidential nomination for the Democrat Party. Bernie Sanders is 13 to 2, and Joe Biden is 20 to 1. So he did make it in there. He did make it in there. 20 to 1, but yes. he doesn't make it through to the, to the possible end conclusion. They have the Republicans who um, are likely to get the presidential nomination. Donald Trump, 2-7. to seven. Ted Cruz, 5-1. to one. John Kasich, 8-1. to one. Marco Rubio, 30-1. to one. Again, Mitt Romney, 75-1. to one, And Paul Ryan, 100-1. to one. So they are leaving out, um, as you said, uh, the possibilities, I guess. They're, they're taking in all of the possibilities, yes. but they leave them out when it comes right down to the presidential election. Hey, Sharon, so, would you one more time tell me the odds for the Florida primary again? One more time. One more time, Florida, Florida primary. Because we're looking at, at Florida tonight, aren't we? Yes, and we are. Ohio, and Ohio, Illinois. So in Florida, it's Donald Trump, 1 to 35. Uh-huh. Marco Rubio, 10 to 1. Uh-huh. Ted Cruz, 250 to 1. And John Kasich, 1,000 to 1. So they are they are predicting Rubio will win the Florida primary. Well, they they're, he's getting better odds than anybody else. Well, I'll tell you why I bring this up. One of the earlier shows here today on the Conservative Commandos Net, Radio Network, uh, chosen generation pastor greg young had on a guest uh jetson phillips one of the tea party organizers and jetson is in florida and he said that a rubio rally today today the the day of the florida primary marco rubio being the the favored son 
There was only 250 people at a Marco Rubio, Marco Rubio rally. So that doesn't, I don't think uh, that, I think that people are going to get down, get there in the voting booth and think, this guy don't have a chance. I don't want to waste my vote. I am predicting an upset in Florida. I think Donald Trump will carry Florida. I think Marco Rubio will not win there. And in not winning, he has to give up the ghost. After tonight, he has to say, I cannot win the nomination. Therefore, I am suspending my campaign. None of them say they're ending their campaign because if they end their campaign, they can't take on any new uh, donations. So they all say they're suspending their campaign. Uh, Sharon, 30 seconds, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to respond to that. I want to come back and talk about who's got delegates and where Rubio stands with the delegate count. Maybe that'll change your mind, Rick. All right. Well, we'll do that after the break. You are listening to Conservative Commandos with Sharon Engel and Rick Trader. Coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24 7. And I love to say this today's show, like all our shows, is being brought to you by the First Amendment and protected by the Second. Think about it, it's important. Don't go away, Sharon, and I'll be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival and a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product in the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade, 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765 641 9972. 765 641 9972. I think we should make public colleges and universities tuition free. <coughs> Climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. <coughs> Remove the federal prohibition on marijuana. <coughs> Climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. I did not email any classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. Certainly well aware of the uh, classification uh, requirements. We have a lot to learn from democratic socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. This campaign is about a political revolution to transform this country. (laughs) Now more than ever, we need our voice in Washington. Now more than ever, we need Sharon Engel in Washington. Go to runsharonengel.com and help us draft Sharon Engel to run for U.S. Senate. 
you can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Or mornings at 9 a.m., log on to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. At 1 p.m., roarradio.net or at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, highplainsdailynews.com. Or you can hear our show or all the shows here on the Conservative Commandos Radio Network any time of the day from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199, 832-999-1199. You don't need an app. You don't need to download anything. Just write that number down and call it. Try it right now. 832-999-1199. And Sharon, we are making some alterations to our schedule as we are talking. So let me give you a little heads up on something. At uh, 3.35, we're going to be speaking with Charlotte Hayes. She's the Director of Cultural Programs at the Independent Women's Forum. Charlotte has appeared on such programs as Politically Incorrect, C-SPAN's Washington Journal, PBS is to the contrary. She's a former correspondent for the National Catholic Registry and is a feature and a feature writer for the Washington Times. Her work has appeared on the Wall Street Journal, the New Yorker magazine, and everywhere else. And Charlotte is going to be joining us to talk to is going to join us to talk today about something that Hillary Clinton said while on the trail, and that's I'm going to put a lot of coal mining companies out of business. Why, that's wonderful coming from a, a presidential candidate, but that's from Hillary Clinton. Uh, changing our schedule, Sharon, at 4.05, we're going to be uh, speaking with Dominic Dom- Dominic, uh, Domenic, Domenic. Dominic Domenic, sorry about that. He is the director of fueling the Fueling Freedom Project. And prior to joining TPPF, he served as the Secretary of Natural Resources in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And Doug is going to be joining us to talk about the advice to states is clear. Stop working on the clean power plan. And at 435 or 440. Sharon, we're going to be speaking with Congressman Phil Rowe. Uh, Congressman Rowe is a doctor. He represents the 1st Congressional District of Tennessee, and uh, he serves as the chair for the Subcommittee on Health, Employment, and Labor, and Pensions. And he's going to be joining us today to talk about another EPA matter. Brick Matt sets dangerous precedent for future future rulemaking. So, Sharon Angle, a couple changes to our schedule or adjustments or whatever. But I I know, Sharon, you also wanted to continue our conversation about uh, the election and the delegate count. Well, that's right. You know, tonight, there are 367 delegates at stake. 367. So let's look at the delegate count so far. Uh, Trump has 473. That's 38.2%. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rubio, I mean, Cruz has 368. That's 29.7%. Rubio, Rubio has 164. So he really needs to uh, sweep the board there in Florida, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And then uh, Kasich has 63, So, and Ohio is up. So this is where these fellows are going to make or break it with a delegate count. Uh, right now, there's 58% of the delegates that will be bound by the end of the evening. Uh, even though the, the uh, primaries go until June 7th, uh, 58% of them are already going to be in by 
the end of voting this evening. So uh, it doesn't look good, Rick. It just doesn't look good for for Marco Rubio or for John Kasich. Mm-hmm. I wonder. I, I wonder where the thinking. Change your is. mind. I wonder where their thinking is. At what point do they say we can't win? Let's pull out of this. I, I, I like I said. I think for tonight it should be for Rubio, especially if he does not win his home state. I think it's the money. You know, money is the mother's milk of politics, and if the money runs out, you can't go forward. And I think that's mm-hmm. what's happened with uh, Dr. Carson and Carly Fiorina, the others who have dropped out, is they just ran out of money. Now, Donald Trump can't run out of money, can he? Uh, he's it's got a lot of it. It's issue, isn't it? <laughs> he's got a lot of it. I'm just pulling up real, cl- rear, real clear politics as we speak to uh, check out the Florida Republican presidential primary. Uh, oh, God. Okay, polling data has... <laughs> In every poll, and I'm looking up the polling data for the, the for the Florida Republican primary, presidential primary, every poll I'm looking at here, taken in the last week or so, has Trump winning from anywhere from 6% up to as much as 25%, showing, showing Trump winning. Over, uh, over Rubio. So uh, Las Vegas got it wrong, didn't they? They well, they tend to one in favor of Rubio, but I'm looking at the real clear. Was, I'm I'm looking at the real 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 clear polit, um, politics average. Uh, the dates from March to seventh through March thirteenth, and they have. Um, a Trump up by 18.3 percent. 18.3 percent. They have Rubio at 40. I'm sorry. They have Trump at 43 percent. Rubio at 25 percent. Cruz at 18 percent. Kasich at 9 percent. So, real clear politics. Florida and maybe we need to give those guys in Las Vegas a clue. They need to go and look at the polling before they bet they make odds on these candidates. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. So I think I think tonight very well maybe the end of Marco Rubio's dream to become president, at least for 2016. In the way, I don't know. You're, it may be his, the end of his political career too, Rick. He he won't be in the Senate. No, he won't because he missed the filing date. So he really doesn't have a job. If he well, I'm sure he'll find one as a, an MSNBC commentator. That's where all those liberals go after their political careers ever. Hey, Sharon, I call him a liberal because anybody who is for amnesty in my book is a liberal. And with that, Sharon, we'll go to break. And you're listening to Conservative Commandos with Sharon Engel and Rick Trader. Coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7, several of them that we'll talk about when we get back. Join us on the other side. We'll be speaking with Charlotte Hayes from the Independent Women's Forum. Be right back. You've heard 
Paul Delt playing the music on the Your Music Matters Morning Show. He is also an experienced mortgage loan officer working for U.S. Mortgage Corporation and assists homeowners navigate the reverse mortgage process. If you are finding yourself asking questions whether or not you set aside enough for retirement, Paul can sit down with you, your family, and your financial advisor and discuss how a reverse mortgage may be a valuable resource for your retirement plan. You will be responsible for paying your taxes and insurance, and the reverse mortgage can help with this and other expenses, such as home health care or other untimely bills. Put Paul's 20 plus years of experience to work for you, as choosing the right option for your situation can be critical. Call Paul at U.S. Mortgage Corporation at 877-213-9977. That's 877-213-9977. Or go to SeniorMatters.info for more information. U.S. Mortgage Corporation is a licensed mortgage banker in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, and an equal housing lender. NMLS number 3901. U.S. Mortgage Corporation is located at 201 Old Country Road, Suite 140, Melville, New York, 11747. This advertisement applies to First Lee Mortgages. Paul E. Dilks, NMLS, is 485904. Hi, we're David and Patty Barrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival in a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product of the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug-out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765-641-9972, 765-641-9972. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around the world on the internet at wnjcradio.com check out our website conservative commandos radio network.com and ccrn.com for rebroadcasts and network updates we are the conservative commandos radio network where even more newsmakers go to be heard I think we should make public colleges and universities tuition free. Climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. Remove the federal prohibition on marijuana. Climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. I did not email any classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. Certainly well aware of the uh, classification uh, requirements. We have a lot to learn from democratic socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. This campaign is about a political revolution to transform this country. (laughs) Now more than ever, we need our voice in Washington. Now more than ever, we need Sharon Angle in Washington. Go to runsharonangle.com and help us draft Sharon Angle to run for U.S. Senate. From 
the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. It's Sharon Engel, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our show, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Or mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern, log on to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. At 1 p.m., ruralradio.net. At 9 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com. Or you can hear our show and all the shows here at Conservative Commandos by calling 832-999-1199. Sharon Angle, we do have our first guest with us, and the honor of the introduction is yours. It's always my honor to introduce Charlotte Hayes, who's the Director of Cultural Programs at the Independent Women's Forum. Charlotte has appeared on programs such as Politically Incorrect, C-SPAN's Washington Journal, and PBS is to the contrary. A former correspondent for the National Catholic Register and a feature writer at the Washington Times, her work has appeared in the Wall Street Journal, New York Magazine, Washington Post, and the Weekly Standard. And her latest book is When Did White Trash Become the New Normal? A Southern Lady Asks the Impertinent Question. Welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show, Charlotte. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be on this show. It's one of my favorite shows. Well, thank you for saying that. You're so kind, and you're one of our favorite guests, so I guess this is a mutual admiration society we've got going here. (laughs) You wrote an article, Hillary Clinton, I'm going to put a lot of coal mining companies out of business. Really? It's it's just, (laughs) well, yeah, it's, well, you know, the Obama administration, they've spent, uh, you know, seven years now giving us regulations that kill jobs and so now Hillary is saying that she's going to put coal, coal companies out of business you know generally Democrats beat around the bush and they use some co- code words like we're going to be nice to the environment but she says basically we're going to put a lot of coal miners and coal companies out of business Clinton said Sunday night while boasting about her clean up energy program with a big smile on her face I'm quoting the from the New York Post um, and it's interesting she's you know she's sort of says, well, and, and, and she'll come back and, and give laid off miners job training. Job training. They have jobs, so you're going to put them out of their jobs and give them job training. Uh, and as the New York Post points out, you know, basically, they're not, green jobs, green jobs really, quote, exist exclusively in liberal rhetoric. Ladies, ladies I got to jump in here. You, you know, I hate to interrupt, but how did all that job training work for all those auto workers that lost their jobs in Detroit? <laughs> how did that uh, work? Job tra- look, job training is ridiculous. Do you know the only job training, having a job? You get a job and you learn the skills on the job. Actually, I got to tell you all, okay, I'm going to bore your readers with a bit of biography here, autobiography. What made me become a conservative was covering the jobs program in New Orleans. It was, I'm going to date myself, CETA, the complicated uh, Comprehensive Educational Training Act. Uh, I had assumed these people were training for jobs, but I'd go to the job sites they were supposed to be training for, and there were no people there. And suddenly I realized it was just a handout. Um, but even if they had been cha- training for jobs, uh, that's not how you get a job. You don't train for a job. You get one by hook or crook. And, and then you move up if you if if you learn the skills. But have you ever heard of anybody who benefited from a federal jobs training program? If if you can bring somebody in, I'll believe you. But otherwise, no. Well, you you go into this in in some detail in your article. You say first off, 
job training is a cliche. Beloved of people who don't really have a solution to anything is right there with solving <laughs> the deficit by ending waste, fraud, and abuse. So you're saying it's just a talking point. It's Hello, just a talking Mr. point. Robot. The, job training is the equivalent of saying, hey, I don't really care. Uh, I'm going to put you out of your job, and I don't really care. But this is the incredible irony, Sharon. These people have jobs, and she's going to put them out of their jobs and give them some job training. And the other thing that really makes me mad is um, the sort of progressive elites act like the coal industry is bad and that it, that all the people who work in it hate it. And I don't know if you ever seen the wonderful movie, uh, How Green Was My Valley. It's about Welch miners, but it's really about a marvelous culture. It's about a really upright family. And I think progressives should have to sit through this movie. It's, it, they have really betrayed people who work for a living and particularly people who work with their hands uh, i.e. Tra- people like coal miners uh, and it's, it's also you know the coal union had a great record on, on, on racial discrimination in the 19th century it ended uh, racial discrimination I mean this is, this is a, a, an American business and she wants to get rid of it because she hates fossil fuels well I have to confess my brother is a mining engineer, and, well, he's retired now, but he worked in Wyoming at a coal mine. And I can tell you that Hillary Clinton is way behind the times. All you have to do is go down inside a coal mine to find out that they have um, really done a world of improvement on ventilation. And the there is no longer the pick miner. They have machinery that does the the picking and and getting the coal out of the ground it's it's an industry they load it up with machinery it's a an industry these coal miners have come into the 21st century they really are um as you say and and they they have paid but they have a job They've spent billions of dollars making coal a, a cleaner fuel. Now, it's not perfect, but it's a cleaner fuel. Um, I, I just don't un- understand this, except that it's ideology. They've vilified people. They've vilified people who use fossil fuels. They've vilified people who own th- these particular businesses. And, but, but who's going to suffer, Sharon? It, it's, it's not going to be uh, Hillary Clinton. It's going to be the people who lose their jobs and get job training instead. Well, that's right. That's right. You're, you are so spot on when it comes to what's really going on here and the ideology of the Democrats and their talking points. I thought that was this interesting that the Post even points out that the most green jobs exist exclusively in liberal rhetoric. Right. There are not <laughs> there are many no really green, green jobs. There are not many green jobs in reality, except talking about green jobs. And that's correct. Now, you've written another article, Grassley holding firm on the Supreme Court. Hey, ladies, uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh. We, we okay. have to take a break. Charlotte, could you hold on for just two minutes? Sure, please? but Charlotte, I don't want to stop talking, Rick. <laughs> I know you don't. I know you don't. But i got to pay some bills here. Or we don't want to have a place to you talk You and Bill from. Clinton, okay. <laughs> All right. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Angle and Rick Trader. Coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7. Our guest this segment is Charlotte Hayes from the Independent Women's Forum. Don't go away on the other side. We're going to be talking about the Supreme Court. Be right back. That's my prerogative. They say I'm nasty, but I... The K-98 
Conservative Commandos radio show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos radio network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos radio network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival in a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product of the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765 641 9972. 765 641 9972. I think we should make public colleges and universities tuition free. Climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. Remove the federal prohibition on marijuana. Climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. I did not email any classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. Certainly well aware of the uh, classification uh, requirements. We have a lot to learn from democratic socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. This campaign is about a political revolution to transform this country. You know? Now more than ever, we need our voice in Washington. Now more than ever, we need Sharon Angle in Washington. Go to runsharonangle.com and help us draft Sharon Angle to run for U.S. Senate. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. You are listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show with Rick Trader and Sharon Angle and our guest. Charlotte Hayes, and if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com, ccrshow.com, or mornings at 9 a.m. You can log on to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. At 1 p.m., log on to roarradio.net, and at 9 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com. Now you can also listen to conservative commandos from any telephone by calling 832 832- Nine 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 eleven ninety nine. Charlotte, thank you so much for staying through the break with us. We were just going to get into your second article, Grassley holding firm on the Supreme Court. As you point out in your article, many people might not expect this from Grassley because he's uh, an establishment um, senator. Well, what do you have to say? There was a terrific piece, and I took some of this from Jim Garrity, and if you don't get Morning Jolt, I bet you do. you got to get it. It's his morning newsletter, uh, Jim Garrity of National Review. But, yeah, Grassley is holding firm, and uh, I I think we should really praise him about this. Uh, Many people are very angry uh, at this point with members of the GOP establishment, whatever that is. But uh, I'm angry, too, but I, I don't direct... Uh, my, my anger at them. I, I, I directed it at the Democrats. So just for the record, I direct my anger elsewhere. But And I also think that there are a lot of things people are angry about them for that they, that uh, had too many moving parts to do better. We got a bad budget deal, but I don't think we could have done better. 
probably. De- the Democrats are hellish negotiators. But on this, all they have to do is stand firm. There are no moving parts with this. All they have to do is stand firm. They will get, get a barrage of, of just absolute vicious, savage criticism. But all they have to do is stand firm. So far, Grassley's doing this. He's going to be challenged by somebody uh, in the next election. He's going to make a big to-do about this. But here's what uh, Garrity says, and I very much second him. Get, uh, our, our people in Congress get a lot of criticism, but we never, on the other hand, say, you know, they're doing a good job. So far, Grassley is doing a heck of a job. I hope I, hope I don't regret that. Um, and, and I say kudos, Senator Grassley. If, if they can uh, keep from having hearings on whoever uh, Obama nominates for the Supreme Court, then that will have been justification for electing them. That will be the reason. Now, if they hold hearings and, and confirm them, then, then all is lost. Oh, and P.S., all is also lost if Hillary or Bernie is elected. P.S. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, so, Senator Grassley has been holding strong. He's 82 years old. He's one of the older um, men in the Senate, one of the older senators that we have. Do you think that is a detriment or is it a positive in his favor? Oh, I, I, I don't think that that matters. I do think, and Garrity pointed this out, that he was a guy that in, in the beginning of the Obama years would have been described as trying to be bipartisan. But Obama has shown him and everybody else in town that bipartisanship just, you know, is not something that he is willing to engage in, he being Obama. So I think, you know... He, He's a man who might have tried to be bipartisan in the beginning. He did vote for the confirmation of Eric Holder. But I think he's, he, his views on bipartisanship uh, and the real realistic hope for that have been shattered. So, no, I, I don't think his age uh, is, is that important. But I, I just, you know, I think we've got to say congratulations, Senator. We hope you, you hang in there because this is something they can do. There are no moving parts on this. It's not like you have to go and say, well, you know, if we'll cut this program, will you do that? Uh, no, there are no moving parts. All they have to do is stand there. And I think that I was hoping you would say what Reagan said. If you won't hold my age against and experience against <laughs> me... <laughs> Remember, in the debate when he said he wouldn't hold Mondale's youth and inexperience against him. Yes. <laughs> so the the thing here is that uh, Grassley, as you point out, is up for re-election, and he hasn't been the staunchest conservative in the Senate. And is it is it because they're giving him a pass? They don't want to leave that, lose that seat, or do you think this is truly? Truly, Senator Gra- Grassley's, as you say, gutsy principled stand. Well, I, I, I should think it is a principle stand. He knows, I, like everybody else, including my cat who's asleep on my desk here, he knows that uh, if, if there's another Obama appointment to the Supreme Court, we've lost the Supreme Court. We've lost the Constitution. The Supreme Court will no longer interpret the Constitution, but will do what it wants to do. So, yeah, no, I, I, I think everybody in Washington knows that this is one of the most important battles that will ever be waged in our lifetimes. And we do have a lot of Senate seats up for grabs this time. Um, you mentioned Harry Reid. Talk about Harry Reid and what he's been Is he your favorite Senator, Senator Sharon? <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> he is my senator. How's that? <laughs> but not for long. He's retiring this year. <laughs> Um, yeah, Harry Reid's attacked uh, uh, Grassley on the floor of the Senate, and, uh, and sometimes these attacks have been very personal. Per- personal, but but what else do you expect of Harry Reid? Well, that's right. He he loves the personal attack, doesn't he? It doesn't have anything to do with anything. But that seems to be uh, the way that most Democrats play is that personal attack. They don't talk about the record. They don't talk about the facts. They talk about things that bring an emotional response. I'm dying to see how the Democrats are going to fight this because they must really have to bring out the heavy artillery. I mean, I think we're going to see a battle like we've never seen before over the Supreme Court seat when Obama nominates somebody. I mean, 
whatever we've seen in the last few years, I think it's, this is going to be like, you know, Armageddon plus 10. <laughs> Armageddon plus 10. I know there's a lot of people that are thinking we're in Armageddon already. Uh, what gives you your hope, Charlotte Hayes? My hope uh, that, that, that the Republicans will stand firm on yes. the Supreme Court. Well, actually, what gives me my hope is it's the easiest thing to do. Uh, and also, you know, Sharon, listen, let's give people some credit. Um, they know, the Republicans know, that if if, if they uh, confirm an Obama nominee, uh, they will have done great damage to the Supreme Court. So, yeah, I, I, you know, what gives me hope is I, is I think they'll do the right thing. I think they'll do the decent thing. Um Maybe I'll be disappointed, but uh, at this point, I think they will do the decent thing. Listen, I'm not mad at the establishment. I'm mad at the Democrats. Well, I think we all are, but I think there is this anger that um, is directed toward the establishment because they go along to get along. They go along with the Democrats, and I should point out that if there were signs that Grassley was willing to hold hearings or support an Obama nominee, that conservative grassroots would raise hell and support a primary challenger. So right. he's walking a very thin line, isn't he? Well, I don't think so. No, I, th- I think, all he, listen, he doesn't have to walk any kind of line. He just has to stand there and not move. <laughs> Which and would be easy. not too hard for a guy who's 82 years was, old. Now, listen, I was going to make that joke, and then I thought that's in bad taste. I'll let Rick make it. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm the king, I'm the king here of bad taste and <laughs> jokes. So go ahead, Rick. Make your bad joke. I, I did. <laughs> This guy being 82 years old, he doesn't move very fast to begin with, so Grassley being 82. No, I mean, I think this is this will be this is going to be a hell of a year. Well, I agree with you that on sh- with that, Charlotte. But the only thing that scares me is how scared the Republicans are of the Democrat of the Democrat media being called obstructionist, um, sh- closing down, shutting down, slowing down the government. I mean, but, the, but the, these things uh, with a with a Supreme Court battle. Uh, you don't have to shut down the government. Uh, there's, 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 there's no battle cry about shutting down the government, and, and you don't shut down the court. It works perfectly fine uh, with an even number of people for a limited time. All right, Charlotte Hayes. We want to. It's always great to speak with you, Charlotte. Please tell our audience how they could keep track of your great work. You are so kind. Uh, please go to IWF.org for Independent Women's Forum. We have blogs. We have papers. We're very amusing. Uh, we're women who like men and the free market. <laughs> and I love the woman from the Independent Women's Forum. <laughs> well, thank you, Rick and Sharon. Uh, Charlotte Hayes, Independent Women's Forum. Thank you so much for joining us. See And up to this point, the name of Donald Trump hasn't even been brought up. (laughs) Who? Who? And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Angle and Rick Trader. Coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at (laughs) WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia. And around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting. Boy, I'm tongue-tied today. One of those tongue-tying days. Uh, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7. Don't go away. Sharon and I will be right back with our next guest. I really don't care. That's my love They say I'm but I... Paul Delt playing the music on the Your Music Matters Morning Show. He is also an experienced mortgage loan officer working for U.S. Mortgage Corporation and assists homeowners navigate the reverse mortgage process. If you are finding yourself asking questions whether or not you set aside enough for retirement, Paul can sit down with you, your family, and your financial advisor and discuss how a reverse mortgage may be a valuable resource for your retirement plan. You will be responsible for paying your taxes and insurance, and the reverse mortgage can help with this and other expenses, such as home health care or other untimely bills. Put Paul's 20 plus years of experience to work for you as choosing
Choosing the right option for your situation can be critical. Call Paul at U.S. Mortgage Corporation at 877-213-9977. That's 877-213-9977. Or go to SeniorMatters.info for more information. U.S. Mortgage Corporation is a licensed mortgage banker in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, and an equal housing lender. NMLS number 3901. U.S. Mortgage Corporation is located at 201 Old Country Road, Suite 140, Melville, New York, 11747. This advertisement applies to first lien mortgages. Paul E. Dilks, NMLS is 485904. Hi, we're David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival in a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product of the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade, 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765 641 9972. 765 641 9972. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the internet at wnjcradio.com check out our websites conservative commandos radio network.com and ccrn.com for rebroadcasts and network updates we are the conservative commandos radio network where even more newsmakers go to be heard i think we should make public colleges and universities tuition free climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism Remove the federal prohibition on marijuana. The climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. I did not email any classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. Certainly well aware of the uh, classification uh, requirements. We have a lot to learn from democratic socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. This campaign is about a political revolution to transform this country. (laughs) Now more than ever, we need our voice in Washington. Now more than ever, we need Sharon Angle in Washington. Go to runsharonangle.com and help us draft Sharon Angle to run for U.S. Senate. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. Drink my wine. 
You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. You are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Sharon Engel and Rick Trader. And if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com or ccrshow.com. Or mornings, you can log on at 9 a.m. to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. At 1 p.m., log on to roarradio.net. And at 9 p.m., log on to the highplainsdailynews.com. And now you can listen to conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. And, Rick, we do have our next guest with us. It's my honor to introduce Doug Domenich, who is the director of the Fueling Freedom Project at TPPF. And prior to joining TPPF, he served as Secretary of Natural Resources in the Commonwealth of Virginia. As a member of the Governor's Cabinet, he oversaw six state environmental, natural, and historic resource agencies with a combined budget of $480 million and a staff of over 2,000. He also served as a member of the Governor's Energy Policy Team. Doug also served in several positions at the U.S. Department of the Interior in Washington, D.C., including White House liaison and Deputy Chief of Staff to two Secretaries of the Interior. Doug, welcome to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Thank you, Sharon. It's great to be with you. Well, it's our pleasure to have you, Doug. And we're, we want to talk to you about the advice to states, which is clear, and that is stop work on the clean power plan. How is we keep hearing we got to have this clean energy, Doug? How is that clear? Tell us why we should stop working on clean power. Well, if if uh, and I appreciate being with with you both. I love your bumper music, by the way. It's a great incentive for conservatives around the country to get motivated uh, to do the right thing, to fight for liberty, uh, to fight for free enterprise and personal responsibility, which we all believe in. You've covered some of these topics in the last uh, segment uh, with Charlotte, but this administration is uh, completely dedicated to the idea that CO2, carbon dioxide, is going to destroy the planet. And uh, out of that, they came up with this, this plan they call the Clean Power Plan, which EPA is implementing on, on most of the states, all but three of the states, and it's all designed to reduce the amount of CO2 that is produced by the electric sector of the state. So every state has a different threshold, a different uh, amount of CO2 that they have to reduce. And the basic bottom line of this is that it will greatly increase the cost of electricity to every single business, every single home in in the states, and, and it works itself out slightly differently. So, for instance, in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania relies about 40% of their electricity comes from coal. The EPA is requiring them to reduce their CO2 by 31%, and the result will be about a 20% increase in the cost of electricity. And uh, so we just think that that's uh, not viable for poor communities, middle-class communities to absorb this kind of uh, increase. And so states got together, uh, 28 states now got together and sued the EPA, basically saying this is not a constitutional law, Congress didn't pass it, and asking the courts to stay the rule or to sort of freeze the rule until we get a chance to argue in court. And the Supreme Court agreed with us. So the status right now is states should not work on a state plan. There's no reason to work on a state plan. They're wasting taxpayer money to work on a state plan because the Supreme Court has stayed the rule. And yet, the EPA Administrator, Gina McCarthy, says she's urging states to continue to take voluntary steps toward compliance with the Clean Power Plan. So this hasn't stopped 
their rhetoric at all. In fact, they're pushing forward. But you're exactly right, uh, Sharon. And the, the stay of the rule really means that EPA is not supposed to do anything uh, related to spending money or providing advice or technical assistance or coordinating of any kind with the states. That's what the stay really means. But you're right. Uh, Gina McCarthy, who is the administrator of the EPA, has been out talking to industry groups and to, and to sort of the uh, uh, air commissioners in the various states saying that the ruling uh, didn't mean anything to them, that it's not going to slow them down. I mean, it really is a defiant attitude that is bothering members of Congress and, and bothering some lawyers who are looking at this very closely. <laughs> so it's like almost everything else that we see this administration doing. They're lawless. They they don't respect the Supreme Court's uh, decision. They don't respect the laws of the land. What are we going to do about this? Is there anything we can do, Doug? Well, it's uh, the main thing to do in terms of this particular clean power plan regulation is to be sure your governor, everybody's governor, uh, is, is hears from taxpayers saying we don't want the state to spend any money trying to prepare a plan and remind people that the EPA, just think in the last eight years during this administration, this is a this is an EPA that's been hiding scientific data that you and I pay for. We pay for it with our tax dollars. They hide it from Congress. They have been criticized for having an administrator who, who made up a fake personal uh, email address so that she could work behind the scenes with environmental groups to come up with policy. Uh, and they've been, uh, uh, we've uncovered staff members who were hired without any real credentials who earned hundreds of thousands of dollars pretending to work for the CIA. So it's a very troubling pattern of uh, 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 unprofessionalism, if I could be nice and say it that way. <laughs> but it's all, the problem is the EPA is imposing all these rules on all of us. And I, you know, our main encouragement at, at the Texas Public Policy Foundation is to encourage people to think about the poor, the middle class, uh, uh, that are uh, impacted by these rules the most. Uh, these are, we've done a number of studies or a number of studies have been done that look at uh, poor African-American communities, Hispanic communities, where they spend a higher percentage of their monthly income on energy. You and I could probably afford to pay a little more for energy, but for a lot of these families, this is a significant part of their budget. And it's not just what they pay at home, but the rate is going to increase at the daycare center, at the local school, at the local police station. So it, it, it just filters through the economy as really a tax. I mean, pure and simple, what the administration wants is a cap-and-trade scheme that results in a national energy electricity tax. And that's why we're opposing it so hard. Hey, can I, can I break in for a minute, Doug? You sure, know, you, you, and by the way, thanks for joining us here on Conservative Commandos. And I, I apologize for butchering the name when I first tried to do the introductions, but I'm also <laughs> the guy that picked the bumper music, so you can't be too mad at me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Doug, Doug, when you say that you and Sharon might be in a position to pay a little bit more, there's a lot of us who are not, and I'm one of those people, and I represent about a large percent of the population, senior citizens, who who did not get a cost of living increase over the last two years. My wife is a retired teacher. Her she, She's on a pension also. Uh, her cost of living increase last year was $1.68 a month. You know, we're already being stretched and taxed already, and taxes aren't going to go down. They're going to continue to go up. But these rules and regulations, Doug, I see just as another kind of tax increase. It is, Rick. And I, I, I did mention uh, senior citizens or others that are on a fixed income, but you're going to be paying more for uh, a product, 
and not get any more of it. So in fact, actually, you may get less of it because as we are forced by these kind of policies to uh, produce more of our energy with things like wind and solar, those are very intermittent. They're not a reliable sources of electricity. And so the, you could actually get less electricity and pay more for it. And the folks at 60 plus, a great uh, senior seniors group, have talked about the fact that this is going to hurt seniors a lot. Uh, hey, Doug, we have to take a quick break. Could you hold for just two minutes for us, please? I'd be happy to. And you'll hear another great opportunity to hear our bumper music again, by the way. And <laughs> you you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Angle and Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7. Our guest is, this segment is Doug Domenich. He's from the Fueling Project, F- Fueling Freedom Project. Boy, am I having a tough day today. You don't go away. We'll be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival in a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product of the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food grade 12 ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765 641 9972. 765 641 9972. I think we should make public colleges and universities tuition free. Climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. Remove the federal prohibition on marijuana. Climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. I did not email any classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. Certainly well aware of the uh, classification uh, requirements. We have a lot to learn from democratic socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. This campaign is about a political revolution to transform this country. (laughs) Now more than ever, we need our voice in Washington. Now more than ever, we need Sharon Angle in Washington. Go to runsharonangle.com and help us draft Sharon Angle to run for U.S. Senate. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. 
Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show with Sharon Angle and yours truly, Rick Trader. For rebroadcasts of our shows, check out our website, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Or mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern, log on to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. At 1 p.m., roarradio.net. At 9 p.m., highplainsdailynews.com. Or you could hear our show from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199. Our guest this segment is Doug Domenich. He is with the Texas Public Policy Foundation, and he is the director of their Fueling Freedom Project. Doug, thanks for holding through that break. We appreciate your time. You bet, Rick. Doug, please tell our audience what the Texas Public Policy Foundation does. Sure. The the Texas Public Policy Foundation was created in the late 80s uh, by a group of liberty-minded conservatives in Texas who were interested in promoting uh, free markets and entrepreneurism uh, in the state. Uh, It has since grown to one of the largest uh, state policy think tanks in the country. Most states have a, a group like this that works on uh, tax issues and education and uh, Tenth Amendment related issues, uh, but we're very fortunate to have uh, the capacity in Texas to have one of the uh, more aggressive groups. We uh, just finished construction of a six-story building in Austin, just two blocks from the state house. There, we like to call it now the address for liberty mm-hmm. in Texas. And uh, as I said, a staff of about 50 folks that are working every day to expand um, liberty across Texas and across the country. So uh, th- what this project, in fact, is one of our national projects. Do you have a website there, Doug? Yes. For the Fueling Freedom Project, it's uh, fuelingfreedomproject.com. And for Texas Public Policy Foundation, it's uh, Texas. Uh, policy.com sorry about that That's and okay. uh, there's one other aspect Rick that I wanted to just jump in before we left the topic oh well, I'm, don't believe me we're not going to leave the topic but go ahead <laughs> I was going to say we talked about the additional cost of energy yeah well I wanted to talk about that too but go ahead I was going to say the other aspect is job losses and that's what I wanted to talk with you next and I'll tell you where I'm coming from Doug You heard our conversation that we had with Charlotte Hayes of the Independent Women's Forum. Hillary Clinton says, I'm going to put coal mining companies out of business. And we've asked you, you uh, thank you so much for rearranging your schedule to come on earlier today because coming on after you is Congressman Phil Rowe from Tennessee. And he's going to be talking about, and these, these things just happen. We didn't plan it that way. But he's going to be talking about the the EPA has been working on regulating air pollutants in the, in the brick and clay ceramic manufacturing industry. And that this ruling is going to mean hundreds of thousands of jobs across the country. So, Doug, I don't think these people on the left care anymore what this is going to cost or how many jobs they are appeasing their base and and, you know doug the way i look at a lot of their base don't have jobs already or don't pay taxes so they don't care they're just appeasing their base and the rest of the country can go to you know where well i i feel your passion uh for this issue and when i hear Uh, Some candidates say that we're going to close down coal plants and retrain coal miners. I don't think they've ever been to coal country because, in, uh, for instance, southwest Virginia, uh, where we have a lot of coal, uh, these areas, there is no other business available for these folks. These coal mining uh, jobs are actually very good-paying jobs for hard-working folks who just want to work. And what we're doing is is uh, basically closing these uh, jobs down and and suggesting that these people get retrained to do some minimum wage job somewhere. And it's just it's insulting. And in fact, uh, 
the National Chamber, Black National Black Chamber of Commerce did a study of the Clean Power Plan, and they anticipate that uh, uh, between now and 2035 that there'll be 7 million lost jobs for African Americans and 12 million lost jobs for uh, Hispanics in the country because of this one rule, not counting the one that you're going to talk about in the next hour. In a d- Doug and I see nobody choking on bad air. I don't know about where you're at, but I'm here. I'm here in the Northeast. We're in and right outside of Philadelphia, one of the industrial one of the industrial areas of our country. I see no one choking on bad air. Well, Rick, you're exactly right. Uh, people think that uh, that what we're fighting is pollution, or they think what they're we're fighting is what they see coming out of a uh, what I'll call a smokestack. But most of that white uh, smoke, quote smoke, is water vapor. They don't realize that, for instance, CO2 is colorless, odorless. It's a natural uh, part of our uh, atmosphere that that plants eat as food and uh, then in turn give us oxygen. The EPA actually tracks what they call six criterion pollutants, air pollutants, and these are the real bad sorts of things that over the past 40 years, I actually give them a lot of credit, over the past 40 years, all of these real pollutants, the amounts have dropped every single year. So our air today is cleaner than it has been in 40, 50, 100 years. And yet, they continue to impose these new rules on businesses and individuals in such a way that we're not. It's going to be very difficult for any business to exist in the future. Doug, before we say goodbye to you, I'm hoping that you'll have time to talk with us about the Republican candidates. Uh, have you had an opportunity to look at their policy to get an idea of where they're standing? Well, I, I would say this, Rick, that since we're a 501c3, okay, gotcha. I, I, I don't think I should comment. I understand. As on any particular candidate, but uh, it, it is interesting to see that most of the uh, most of the candidates in one party are, have said something that's very positive, and the ones in the other have not. <laughs> you know, Doug, you, you know, you talk about what comes out of a smokestack. My wife and I occasionally do a pizza picnic. We ride down to the Jersey Shore, and we we pick up our favorite people pizza at Mac and Manko's. We go to this place in Summers Point, New Jersey called Kennedy Park, which is virtually in the smokestack of the Beasley Point power plant. They produce power by burning coal. We go there for a picnic, and Doug, the only thing that I can see in and around their smokestack is occasionally more a water vapor. Well, you're right. That's that's predominantly what's coming out of uh, most uh, industrial uh, smokestacks today is the uh, is water vapor that happens when you have hot water and you cool it down. It produces water vapor, and it's not. Uh, it should not be seen as a pollutant. And uh, and Doug, we got to run, but please one more time. Tell our audience where they could get more information on the Texas Public Policy Foundation and also the um, the Fueling Freedom Project. You bet. Our website at uh, Texas Public Policy Foundation is www.texaspolicy.com. And inside there, you can find our project, fuelingfreedomproject.com as well. And lots of great information on everything we're doing, including a video that we just produced on how the Clean Power Plan impacts Navajo, the Navajo Nation in Arizona. It's an amazing video that's worth watching. Well, I know being out in the Navajo Nation about 25 years ago, a lot of their economy revolved around coal mining. Exactly. They've got uh, two power plants. Uh, in uh, on the reservation, and they mine coal yeah. on the reservation. And the EPA is essentially, you know, here's an area that needs jobs, 
and they're basically taking them away. Doug Domenech, thank you for joining us on Conservative Commandos. I hope you'll come back again. Rick, I'd love to. It's a great show. Thank you so much. And you are listening to Conservative Commandos with Sharon Angle and Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, WNJC 1360 in Philly, around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, AM, FM 24-7. On the other side, we're, we hope we're going to be speaking with Congressman Phil Rowe. You don't go away, because we will be back. You've heard Paul Delt playing the music on the Your Music Matters Morning Show. He is also an experienced mortgage loan officer working for U.S. Mortgage Corporation and assists homeowners navigate the reverse mortgage process. If you are finding yourself asking questions whether or not you set aside enough for retirement, Paul can sit down with you, your family, and your financial advisor and discuss how a reverse mortgage may be a valuable resource for your retirement plan. You will be responsible for paying your taxes and insurance, and the reverse mortgage can help with this and other expenses, such as home health care or other untimely bills. Put Paul's 20 plus years of experience to work for you as choosing the right option for your situation can be critical. Call Paul at U.S. Mortgage Corporation at 877-213-9977. That's 877-213-9977. Or go to SeniorMatters.info for more information. U.S. Mortgage Corporation is a licensed mortgage banker in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, and an equal housing lender. NMLS number 3901. U.S. Mortgage Corporation is located at 201 Old Country Road, Suite 140, Melville, New York, 11747. This advertisement applies to first lien mortgages. Paul E. Dilks, NMLS is 485 Hi, we're David and Patty Berrickman of Wildflower Ridge Honey, beekeepers for 49 years. I want to tell you about a great survival and a multi-use product called Trail Rations. It is pure honey and a product in the USA. Trail Rations comes in a food-grade, 12-ounce, very durable and reusable pouch, ready for immediate use or for long-term storage because honey is the only food that never spoils. Honey is instant energy and goes right straight to your bloodstream. Honey is one of the best all-natural survival foods, natural sweetener right straight from Mother Nature. Honey is also antiviral, fungal, and bacterial. It's your first aid in a pouch. Carry one in your backpack or your bug out bag. Find us on Facebook, Wildflower Ridge Honey, or call 765-641-9972, 765-641-9972. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology, to be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, Automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the internet at wnjcradio.com check out our website conservative commandos radio network.com and ccrn.com for rebroadcasts and network updates we are the conservative commandos radio network where even more newsmakers go to be heard i think we should make public colleges and universities tuition free (laughs) 
climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. Remove the federal prohibition on marijuana. The climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. I did not email any classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. Certainly well aware of the uh, classification uh, requirements. We have a lot to learn from democratic socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. This campaign is about a political revolution to transform this country. (laughs) Now more than ever, we need our voice in Washington. Now more than ever, we need Sharon Angle in Washington. Go to runsharonangle.com and help us draft Sharon Angle to run for U.S. Senate. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And you are listening to Conservative Commandos with Sharon Angle and Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our shows, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern, log on to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. At 1 p.m., roarradio.net. Or at 9 p.m., highplainsdailynews.com. And you could also hear our show and all the shows that are associated with Conservative Commandos Network. From your telephone by calling 832 ah, Boy, what a day. 832-999-1199. Sharon, very shortly, we hope to be speaking with uh, Congressman Phil Rowe, who represents the 1st Congressional District in Tennessee. And as soon as we get uh, Dr. Rowe on the phone, we'll bring him right in. But in the meantime, Sharon, we have a few minutes uh, wondering what else is on your radar screen. Well, here in in Nevada, we are just finishing up the filing for office. The last day to file is Friday, the 18th of March. Mm -hmm. And I know that many Nevadans are wondering if I'm going to run. You've been running our commercial all day today. And (laughs) and every day for the last two And every day. (laughs) Well, I know that you're... you're, um, listeners, our listeners, will be interested to know what finally happened with those barking dogs. All right. And Sharon, we do have uh, our next guest with us, and the honor of the introduction is yours, so please take it away. Well, it is my honor to introduce Congressman Phil Rowe. Dr. Phil Rowe represents the 1st Congressional District of Tennessee, a resident of Johnson City, serving his fourth term in Congress and is committed to working on behalf of the 1st District, Tennessee, and our nation. He serves as the chair of the Subcommittee on Health, Employment, Labor, and Pensions. Congressman Rowe, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Sharon Rick, thanks very much for having me on. I'm a little out of breath. I ran over just finished (laughs) voting on the House floor, and I ran up the stairs. I usually take the stairs to stay in shape a little bit, so if I'm panting a little bit, that's why. Dr. Rowe, you're in better shape than I am, because if I ran up those steps... (laughs) I'd be laying on them. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We're glad to be here. Well, Dr. Rowe, we asked you to join us to talk about Brick Mac and their precedent of future rulemaking. Uh, first of all, explain to us what MACT stands for when we're talking about Brick Mac and, and just what dangerous precedent are they setting? Well, it sort of set the table up, Sharon. Uh, the, the, the acronym, uh, the MAC, M-A-C-T, stands for Maximum Achievable Control Technology. That's where the, and it's a rule 
that the Environmental Protection Agency first brought out in 2002, and realizing then that it could cost hundreds of thousands of jobs, it was opposed and was taken to court. But during that time um, that it was in the court, the, the companies, the brick companies, implemented all the requirements that, that the EPA had asked for to meet these new standards. And what I'll give you an example of what they've done with coal-fired power plants. <clears throat> Even though coal-fired power plants have reduced emissions by 90%, uh, the EPA issued a rule that, that uh, created a situation where the technology doesn't exist in the world to meet those standards. So it essentially put coal-fired power plants, new ones, out of business. What they did with this one in, in 2007, the court vacated the ruling after the industry had already spent millions of dollars to comply with the rule. They couldn't back up. So what, what did, after the court ruled against the EPA, what did they do? <clears throat> they issued another rule. And it finally came to fruition about, um, I think, about uh, December of, of 2014. But then there was a, a, a time of hearing and, and so forth. It's, it's going to be implemented fairly soon. And what they left out was, was that the, the new rule ignored the 95% reduction of pollutants that the original rule had done that, that the uh, brick companies had already done. And, and they estimate, the, the brick companies in the Chamber of Commerce estimates that the 60 or 70 brick plants, are, are most many of them are small companies in this uh, country, couldn't afford the $100 million a year. And you and I couldn't afford a brick if they did. It would cost so much. The EPA estimated it would cost $25 million, which everybody thinks it's a joke. Uh, that that's way underestimated. So that's basically what it is. And what this bill that we passed, that Bill Johnson from Ohio was the chief sponsor of, was said, look, you can't enforce these new regulations until a court has had a chance to hear it again so that they don't make this, you know, fool me once, it's my fault, fool me twice, it's it's my fault. And, And so what they're saying is before we invest more money and put 60 or 70 small businesses out of business, Let's let the court rule and keep things as they are right now. So that's and that's all it's asking for. It seems like they really don't want the brickmakers in business. If they make a rule, the brickmakers comply, and then they change the rules. What is that about? I I'm I'm astounded, and I know our listeners are too. Well, this is one where it, it goes. You, Sharon, that's a great point you just made. It, it it's much bigger than this because if the courts rule against the EPA, whether whether it's the coal business, this or any other, uh, whether it's waters of the U.S., whatever it may be, what happens when they don't get a ruling? They just change a rule, and you then have got to go through all this legal uh, rigmarole again, which a lot of small businesses cannot afford. Let me give you an example of of government. Uh, uh, overregulation <clears throat> in healthcare today. Something I know a little bit about. We spend more money on gov- on complying with rules and regulations, and then we do heart disease treatment and cancer treatment in, in the United States. That's how ridiculous it is. In education, uh, a tremendous report. I would I would say maybe someday we've got a chance to go in, in, into it in detail. Doctor Nick Zeppos, who's a chancellor at Vanderbilt, um, initiated a study. At Vanderbilt University, and this 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 was about twenty different colleges, two year colleges, small Christian colleges, land grant colleges, major universities. So he had a great diverse group of colleges across the country, community colleges, and so forth. It it cost Vanderbilt in twenty fourteen a hundred and fifty million dollars to comply with government rules and regulations. It added eleven thousand dollars per student per year to their tuition, Jeez. and. These are the kinds of things I think that the American people don't see, but they're writing the checks for. If this brick mac thing goes in, then your bricks are going to cost more. Is that going to help an already slumping construction uh, business in this country? No, it doesn't. It hurts them. It, uh, it, uh, it's a block for creating jobs. Now, you described what this new bill does. And yet, President Obama is threatening to veto it, even though it passed 238 to 163. Is this an agenda to close down business? That's what we're all out here hanging on your every word, I think. Because we heard Hillary Clinton just tell us frankly that she's going to close down coal mines. 
I, yeah, that one, uh, and I, I live, I have no coal mines in my district, but I live in northeast Tennessee and just across the border is southwest Virginia where there are a lot of coal mines just a little north of me and certainly West Virginia and eastern Kentucky is not very far away. That part of the country, they've created an economic wasteland. Um, there's one county in uh, southwest Virginia that 60% of the revenue they have to run their county, that's to pay their sheriffs, their deputy sheriffs, their schools, their school teachers, 60% of their revenue comes from coal. And I asked them, I said, well, what, do you, what do you do when coal goes away? And they said, well, we don't know what we're going to do. And I can tell you what's going to do. Your houses will be walked away from. Banks will be holding homes that no one will want or can afford. Young people won't stay there. They will leave, and those counties drop and go away. And, and a small rural county in my district, Unicoi County, right next door to where I live, just lost 300 of the highest-paying jobs in the county from um, the railroad who closed a, uh, a, a repair facility there that had been there for 100 years because coal was no longer going through that part of the country. CNX Railroad did. They closed, and these are the best jobs in the county. So, Jerry, can I jump in for a minute? Sure, Rick. Doc, Dr. Rowe, all day we've been talking about here on our show about Hillary Clinton, about the clean power plan, and it just so happens we have you on a day to talk about this, this Matt thing. I on, D- Dr. Rowe, I honestly think, and I've said it three or four times today, these people on the left don't care what the cost is, how many people it's going to put out of work. And and I think it's partly because their base does not work, does not pay taxes. They're, they're just running with their base. And in doing so, they're willing to wreck the company or the country. They're willing to wreck people's lives. They don't care who they walk over just to get votes. I, you know, I, I would hope it would be something different than that, but Rick, you may be absolutely right. And here's a little factoid for people, and you can go look it up if they want. If people dispute this, China, and and I have been in China in the last two years. China emits more CO2 than the United States, Canada, and Mexico put together. Mm. And we are we're the only country that didn't with a major industrial company that didn't sign the Kyoto Accords, and we're the only one that actually met the standards of Kyoto. And so we're doing that. We're putting a huge hamstring on our own businesses. I, I will attend a uh, in May of this year a coal conference, which has gotten progressively smaller. Uh, I'm, I'm asked to come each year and speak. And one of the participants last year told me he said there was a coal-fired power plant in South Carolina that was sold to, and I won't mention the country in Central America that bought it, <laughs> and they bought everything but the scrubbers. Ah. By the part that cost the money that that company had put in to help clean the air up. They just bought the coal-fired power plant. And so when you go around the world and you see emerging uh, uh, economies like India and China, they're, they're going full tilt, and what we're doing is we're hamstringing our own people. And plus, all of these regulations, Rick, have a huge cost to the consumer. Ultimately, we pay the bill. You know that. Oh, I build a house, and a brick costs twice as much as it used to. The, the, uh, the uh, construction company, the contractor, is going to pass that cost on to me. And, and, and Dr. Rowe, when we talk about manufacturing a brick, we're talking about ter- taking clay from the earth, something that has been here since before people. I mean, this is not not a dirty process to produce bricks, is it? Well, they have uh, the the at probably one time it was Rick, but these companies now uh, headquarters of General Shale is in my district and. They, they make, uh, I think there were three billion brick uh, made in, uh, in the U.S., producing U.S. two or three years ago. That was half as many bricks that were produced before the recession. Uh-huh. Uh, 25%, I think, of those bricks that are, that are being used in America have been used in Texas, where guess what? They have low taxes. They have a pro-business uh, growth there, and people are moving to Texas. Where is the population shrinking? Well, it's shrinking in Illinois. It's shrinking in New York. It's shrinking in Massachusetts. All these places that put all these onerous um, conditions on businesses, and they just vote with their feet. They leave. Tennessee's growing. Florida's the big, now the second b- biggest state in the union. Well, New and Jersey in the last 10 years has lost 2 million people, by the way. 2 million taxpayers have, have voted with their feet and gotten out of the state. Congressman Rowe, do you think it's time 
for Congress to step in with the EPA and rein them in. I'm not saying totally abolish, totally abolish the EPA, but rein them in. I'll tell you where I'm coming from, doctor. We all must admit that since the 1960s, that the EPA at one time did some very good work, but now it's almost like they have to justify their existence, so they come up with these crazy regulations to show that they're doing something. Crazy regulations that, frankly, are not needed. Rick, and if you see me on the weekend, um, if you get an opportunity, many times you'll see me in my hiking boots on the Appalachian Trail. I, I have friends. We It's just the way I clear my head. I'm out all the time. No one wants to protect our environment more than I do. Well, that's how you and, can run up those steps, by the way, the camp, and, you know, getting out on a weekend and, and the, uh, hiking. Let, just to let our listeners know, when I was the mayor of Johnson City, Tennessee, we won the Green City of the State and the, and the EPA National Award for the Environment in the use of methane. We used a landfill to heat and cool our VA at home. So I don't need a lecture on the environment. I've done it. I don't talk about it. I've actually done it. Right. And... And, and fr- what's happening now is, is it's, you're absolutely right. Well, look, we saw times when our streams were polluted. Uh, I take pride in the way, and much of what they've done has been very good. What we have done here in the Congress through the appropriations process, and that's the reason it's so important not to have a CR, you just a continuing resolution for the, for the uh, discretionary part of the budget, because you just keep spending money the way you have been. What we have been able to do when the last omnibus passed it actually reduced the EPA's funding level to where their staffing level is now at 1989 levels. So that has been focused on, and I think the overreach, look, we want them to be, we want to be good stewards of our environment. I want clean drinking water where when I go home and look at what happened in, in Michigan, it's unconscionable what yes. happened to those folks up there. That should never happen in this country. And it was a breakdown of leadership on the state and local level that, acquired, that allowed that to happen. I know I've been the mayor of a city. I know the the person who runs our water department locally. And, and it's a huge responsibility that local officials have to provide good drinking water. But they have reached so far the waters of the U.S. where they want to control every raindrop that falls on somebody's farm. It's ridiculous. Well, doc, Dr. Rowe, when you say that, you, you got to take that literally because there are places like in Oregon, you know, the, where the, the state is, is saying it is our water. It is our water. We control whatever water that falls, even on your own property. We had a guest here in the Conservative Commandos radio show a couple of years ago who actually went to jail because on property that they own, they had water retention ponds that they used in case that there was a forest fire. The state come along and says, nope. That's not your water. It's our water. We're claiming it, and we're putting you in jail for holding it. Oh, my gosh. Well, well <laughs> out of the other side of their mouth, <laughs> we, we just built a lot of detention ponds because of what the EPA said you had to control uh, in, in a rulemaking of an impervious surface. If you've got so many square feet of impervious surface, like a, the roof of a house or a, a parking lot, you have to control 80% of, the, of what goes off of there, and the only way to do it is a detention pond, for goodness sakes. So I, I would have made the argument that this man had a detention pond. They force us to retain some of that water on site. Yeah. Hey, Sharon, you were at our house last week. You stayed with us for a couple of days. It's a good thing you're not here this week because our our property is, is flooded. We live in a low area. But even the EPA can come on and sit and tell us what we can and cannot do with the water that, that, that lands on our own property. I'm so well, glad that Dr. Rowe is on our on our show so that he can tell you about retention ponds. So <laughs> you have you have at least a little bit of a, a way to defend yourself, I guess, against the EPA saying, "What's all that water doing on your property?" <laughs> You're retaining it exactly. Here, here's there is a there is a glimmer of hope. Let's. Let's say this when this election cycles over, a Republican wins the presidential election. We retain the Senate. There's a rule out there, and I think, Rick, we've talked about this before, called the RAINS Act. Yes. What the RAINS Act says, I've voted for it uh, three times. The RAINS Act says that any rule that's promulgated by the government, and, and these rules are made after we write laws. Once that rule is promulgated, 
you you then, if it affects the U.S. economy by more than $100 million, which is not much in our economy, that rule has to come back to the, to the uh, Congress for approval or it doesn't go into effect. That would be a huge stop for this overreach. And we've never been able to get the president. You can't get it out of the Senate, first of all. You can't get 60 votes in the Senate. But we could get that thing on a reconciliation and get it with a simple majority and get it to a, a Republican president. would sign that. It would stop this nonsense. Sharon, do you want to pick up? Yeah, I do. I, I want to know why we can't get enough votes to stop some of this. What What is your uh, assessment of it, Dr. Rowe? What, it, what's causing this? Because the people are angry because we can't get anything done. They said, give us the House. We did. Give us the Senate. We did. And they're still not doing anything. What is causing this? We can pass anything we want in the House of Representatives. It takes 218 votes. Simple majority. The Senate has different rules. And we've actually talked to them on the appropriations. And, and, and so our listeners will know they have a, the rule called the cloture rule. It takes 60 votes to break off debate to actually get a vote on the, on the Senate floor. So a, a perfect, exam, perfect example is the Iranian uh, nuclear deal that we voted against. Only four Democratic senators opposed that, which meant that they couldn't break off debate and get that bill to the president's desk. So that's the problem. It's the arcane rules in the Senate. And we passed, I think during Harry Reid's last tenure as the uh, majority leader in the Senate, we passed 380-plus bills. He took up 12 of them out of 380 that we passed in the House. So that's the hang-up, and it is the rules. And the Founding Fathers actually wanted it difficult to do. But this 60-vote this was never in the Constitution. It's really there to protect the minority. And I think the Republicans, senators, are afraid that they'll lose that power if they go back in the minority. I say, fine, lose the power. Don't go back in the minority. But you're gumming up uh, appropriations bills and other bills that we're constitutionally required to do. So I, we've really tried to get the Senate to do that. They, they will not. And that's why they I will mentioned... not change the rules. Is what you're saying? They they make the rules, but they will not change. Yeah, the they rules. make the rules. It, there's nothing in the Constitution about having to have 60 votes in the Senate. It's just a simple should be a simple majority, and it is. If you use reconciliation, that's how the Obamacare was passed. They used this arcane tool called reconciliation. That's how they got the simple majority, not not a 60 vote uh, threshold in the Senate. They they skipped that. Well, we use that to get the Obamacare repeal to, to President Obama's desk, of which he vetoed, and then we didn't have the number of votes to overdo it. There are some things getting done. Uh, the No Child Left Behind repeal, the Every Student Succeeds Act, we passed a few months ago, that one, the Veterans Choice Act, the Highway Bill. There, there are some things that have gotten done, um, but not as much as we want to. And I certainly, believe me, when you're sitting at ground zero where I am, you, you don't know the frustration that I feel. Congressman Filvera, we want to thank you so much for joining us. It's it's always our pleasure to speak with you. Please tell our audience how they can find more about this uh, Matt, uh, brick mat rule and how to stop it. Okay, they can uh, go. There's an article I've written as on my website at www.roe, that's R-O-E, dot house, dot gov. And also you can go to the um, Republican Policy Committee and look up the Legislative uh, Digest. It's uh, www.policy.house.gov. So those are two good sources and it explains it pretty well. Congressman Phil Rowe, Dr. Rowe, thank you so much for joining us on Conservative Commandos. Sharon Rick, thanks very much for having me. Take care. God bless. Sharon, uh, we're getting near the end of our time. I want to thank you for sitting in today as my co-host. 30, 30 seconds. Final thoughts. I was so happy to hear Congressman Rowe tell us that it's just a lack of courage. They can change these rules if they're willing to do it. I agree with that lack of courage. I think we got too many too many people sitting in the House, too many people sitting in the Senate who don't have the courage to do the right thing for the American people, and that's what we have to change. So I say regardless of who the nominee is, regardless of who the Republican Party nominee is, we've got to put conservatives in Congress who, who, who do have the intestinal fortitude to do, to do the right thing for the American people. That's right, Rick. That's right. And I think that Congressman Rhodes said it very plainly. And that's, of course, why we have so much anger across the country 
when the American people are voting, that's what they're voting. They're saying we don't want spineless people any longer making the laws. We want someone with courage. All right. With that, John, we've got to wrap up. I want to, as I said, I want to thank you and our guest. I want to thank Mr. John Forsyth Jr. for working the boards. But for right now, we're out of time. We've got to run. we got to go. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow on the radio. Thank you.